correct. That is, yes. That's correct. Okay. So I'm looking at the um, main screen here. This is the assigned work orders page. Um, so you would w imagine I'm a technician and I'm um, looking at my daily assignments. So it's very similar to what you would think of as a time card or an assignment um, you know, screen for you to clock in or clock out, for example. Um, today's date, Friday, September 11th, I don't have anything. So we'll, we'll put something under my name so that we can go through what it looks like when you um, put some time or some notes on a work order. Um, but, but this would be um, managed um, back in your office on the Sage 100 side, or you can manage it right here through the Sage Service Ops Dispatch Board, um, the assignments um, feature. So, so the technicians um, have the ability, if you would want to give them a lot of control, or you can actually give them very limited control, and they can just enter notes. And everything they enter from this side of things in Sage Service Ops will we'll communicate back down to your Sage 100 software. So um, this technician, me in particular, I have the ability to add work orders or miscellaneous assignments, or I could even get to a point where I could enter a work order and assign it to somebody else. But let's just um, let's, let's bypass these options and let's just go to the dispatch board. Let's find an open work order to give myself. So the dispatch board, actually let's start with left to right, the dashboard. <laughs> The dashboard is the home screen for the office staff. Um, the technicians, when they log in, would only have that assignments page, unless you decided they were a senior tech and they needed more information. But the dashboard page is able to be, um, you, you can customize it a bit for your own company. Obviously, your logo would be yours. And then here you'd have the new service work orders for the day, the invoices that were tallied for the day, the past week's invoices. I haven't done a lot of action in my Sage 100 demo environment, obviously, a lot of zeros. Hopefully your company has a little bit more. Um, but under the assigned, unassigned service orders, you're able to um, sort them by the um, type menu. So, you know, in your menu, you may have different options than what I'm showing you here, because you're obviously part of the demo environment that I have. But whatever you have in Sage 100 to designate the different types of service orders will be the types of options in this drop down. If I just wanted to see service, let's say, for example, for an AC maintenance call, I could just see my service AC maintenance calls in a list. And I can load, you know, 20 at a time. There's 92 of them. I would also be able to see over here some of the recent activity options. So it looks like I've been in here a few times doing a couple things. Jay from IFS has come in here, and he's done um, a few options in here. He's moved some things around on September 1st. He was in here. Um, you know, obviously, if you had many technicians on in the field doing all these things, the recent activities would be um, kind of valuable. You'd be able to see who put time where, or did what, um, as far as started or stopped themselves. Um, and then down below, this billing assistant. Basically, what this does is it shows you the oldest, um, the oldest numbers in your system that have costs on them that could be technically billed that don't have an invoice on them yet. Um, so you'd be able to go through that and. Um, highlight those work orders and look at those. Usually this is more of a reference point. You might have this open on a screen and your Sage 100 on another. You go in and make sure that these um, orders are closed properly or filled accordingly. Kind of a clean up or catch all position for you is that there. That would do. Um, so let's go to the dashboard. And the dashboard, the dashboard allows you to see groups at a time, and so you can control this too. So if you had a north team or a south team, or you might have, um, did I hear you right, was this a landscaping company? So, yes. So maybe you have an irrigation team and you have, you know, the mowing team, or you have a snow removal team versus something else. So you can actually build your teams, and these are your resources coming right out of stage 100. So over here you're able to um, dictate or um, qualify those teams through um, through this edit feature. You know, let's say I had a new employee start and they're part of Jay's team. I could just look that employee up from Sage 100 and add them to the team, and then they'd be able to be um, viewed at the same time. Um, you have the ability as well to add equipment to the team. Equipment is your company resources. So if you had a piece of equipment, you know, maybe you have a special. Mm -hmm. uh, someone have a question? Okay. Okay, so you might have um, equipment that's designated for that team as well, and you'd want that to be viewed in the dispatch board as well. So we're going to get out of my dispatch groups and go back to my board. But that's, 
you can have as many groups as you'd like. There is no limit on that of employees, vendors, or equipment, and they're created here. And then on the dispatch view again, you can see that then, then I can pick from my groups. And this is just a web-based application. So some people have said, well, what if I want to view two at a time? You can go to Jay's team here. You could open up another tech tool screen, just have another monitor here on the dispatch board, pick a different team, and say, I just wanted to see my company resources. Um, you know, and you'd have to just toggle back and forth from the two views. You could certainly do that. Um, but you can't split the screen um, and view the two um, at a time. Um, so these are the um, items that I have, or the people I should say resources for Jay's project team. I'm just going to pick a work order and put it under Jessica Turner, which is me for this um, particular thing. So my work orders here, I can also filter this view. Um, I can filter it by site. I could filter it by technician. I could filter it by type of work order again, just like I could on my dashboard if I only wanted to pick service calls that are of the utmost urgent priority. Let's see if I have any. I do. So I have a compressor making noise, um, needs device, things like that. So I have some of the top priority calls that I could pull. Let's just see if I can pull this call and give it to myself today. There we go. So I put that call under my name, and I'm able to go into that call and update all sorts of different options on that call. I can start my travel time. I could update it and actually give it to somebody else. Oh, I made a mistake. It needs to go to a different employee. I could also do that through the drag and drop feature, but you can use the update feature as well. Maybe the priority is different um, than, than it was previously stated. I could change the start time and end time. I could add the travel minutes and the actual hours here. And then these become units on the work order in service in stage 100. Um, so I'm going to cancel that now. I want to do it as an employee, as a technician. So, so, so I'm the dispatcher, let's say, and I've just taken that call and I've put it under my name. I maybe have a whole week's worth of scheduled calls. I can do a week at a time, and I can move the calls back and forth from a day to day. I can do two weeks if I really got great at it. And it's really difficult to see what these are by just number, but you can hover over them and see. So you can see how, how booked out your resource was, let's say, um, on any particular time frame. And you can go back or forward and then just go back to today's date as well. So these, these are all nice little quick buttons to be able to see things all at one time. So let's just look at today's date. Um, and oh, I went to September 1st. That's why. Excuse me. I'm like, oh, that's a lot more action than I thought. <laughs> September 1 uh, was, was busier than September 11th. So now I have that call here for Lamb Shoes. And if I wanted, um, I'm just going to pretend I don't have the dashboard or dispatch. I'm a technician now. I'm on my assignment screen. And I go in here and I see, oh, I've got lamb shoes today. This is what I'm going to do. And again, you can dictate these hours here through that update feature. You could do that yourself. Or you can even do it when you do the scheduling in Stage 100. These would mimic and say the exact same times as um, you had in your, in your back area. You have the ability, if you'd like, to let the technician email the site. You know, let's say he wants to say, I'm on my way. Um, they would have the ability to email the customer site. It doesn't look like we have an email address for Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Lamb Shoes. If we did, they would automatically um, populate in here. Let's not send the email right now. Um, but if I wanted to find more information out about Lamb Shoes, I could click on this, or I can click on this for just a work order detail. Sometimes you go to a location and you want to know the history of the site. Well, you have the ability here to actually see all of the calls for lamb shoes, as well as get a nice little uh, map right to that site. Um, this one has one major job, so one job center, but it has several work orders, right? So 203 work orders. Um, so I could look through the history here. And you can control this, too. So I have 365. You could control it down to 30 days, 90 days. You, you can dictate however many days of history you want to give them. Um, you can also just say, I don't want to give them the ability to see service sites if you don't want them to. But from this service site screen, they have a lot of information. It's very similar to the client view, I think, that you have in um, page 100. And you should be able to see any items or notes, um, special the quotes that are designated from the tool itself would actually be held here as well. Um, and if you wanted to generate a new work order, generate a quote, 
update the client location. So you can create all of these um, these options right from the screen. I'm going to go back to my work order screen. I don't actually remember which work order I was on, so I want to make sure I'm in the same one. Assignment. Work order 715. So if I click on the work order, I'm brought to the work order detail page. And this work order detail page is really where all the stuff happens, okay? This is where I get to see which order number I'm on. The work order record number starts to be uh, shown there. You can give the technicians the ability to update the work order here. They can edit it. You can also take away that ability. So you can, again, the control feature is either yes or no. I'm going to allow these or not allow these. They can enter the amount of payment that they receive if they receive payment from the site. You can also hide that feature. So um, this would take me to the same place I just was previously, the service site um, information. Um, now I have the description of the call. The compressor is making noise. The call is out. Um, a status is in work order status. Um, oh, this is a pretty old one. So April 7th, there, it was completed by somebody else in the demo site. Um, but I would have any other information that was in stage 100 would be um, shown here as well. And then here's my assignments. Um, and I'd be able to look at my assignments and update those assignments. So Dion um, completed his assignment back in April 7th. And so I just gave myself an old work order. Obviously, they, they may not have this information. Um, but you'd be able to see exact information about that work order here. And this remove assignment would not be a, um, an option for a technician, again, Keep in mind, I have full full access rights. Um, but here I am. I'm Jessica Turner. I'm going to start my travel time. And I'm ready. I'm driving. And it all is good. And I could arrive on site. And I'd be ready to start my time. And let's say I'm going to start my time for labor training then. So now it's saying the assignment um, the assignment will be completed by me. My travel time is done and my start time is done. And then I can add notes. And these notes actually also will appear in Stage 100. Um, they're referencing them as blue note or yellow note. So they're two different types of notes in your system. Um, they would know um, which note to use. You'd be training them on which one it is. You also have the ability to add canned responses. These canned responses are um, are specific to um, to the site, but you actually control that yourself. There's an option under admin, can responses, create all your own. So you may always type the exact same thing every time you do a fall cleanup in the yard, right? So you may do fall cleanup and it includes six different items. In this way, the, the technician or the landscaper doesn't have to type all six items and forget one or the other. You can create a note that's automatically available from the drop-down fall cleanup complete. They click it, the item the option, all of the information would show up here, and they'd be able to go on their way to create a report. And you can also decide whether or not you want to be notified in the office every time they put a note, or you don't. And you can control whose email, email addresses are here. I'm going to not bother the demo person here. Um, and then you go into the labor tab. And this is the standard labor probably from our friend Dion from a while ago. I would add my labor. So it would automatically assume that it's me right here, Jessica. Today's date, my start time was 10 o'clock when we made our call. I'm going to have to do that. And I'll do it in one hour. And uh, we were doing comments. One hour. And I did. I don't. I didn't work on a specific piece of equipment. But if you did have your, I don't know, sprinkler systems or something like that, equipment or materialized, you could do that. Save labor. Okay. So now I have my one hour, and then I have Dion's three hours from April. Parts. This is where it pulls right from your stage 100 um, assembly part. So if you've um, built your assemblies or you're building the assemblies in your system, you can look them up right here, and they automatically populate the information. If you wanted to just use a one-off inventory part, you can add it here. You can look it up, and it will look it up there. Um, if you wanted to just do a miscellaneous item, let's say it's neither an assembly nor an inventory part, and I just wanted to type it up, and it was a, um, I don't know, random electrical component. Um, one, you'd have the ability to decide whether or not you want them to tell you pricing. You don't have to require pricing. Um, some, some, some companies love that they can do all the pricing here, and some companies would rather just have them do the data entry and do the billing out on their own side. 
um, depends on how, how versed uh, your technicians are um, in all of the different um, terminology for Stage 100. Then I'm ready to create my report. And you'll see there's a lot of different company forms down here. These company reports would be specific to you individually. So you can create these um, forms yourself. They're pretty simple to create. You can also have the development team from IFS. If you have something that seems like it might be a little bit more complicated and it needs to be customized, you can have them quote out a custom form. They run around $500 to $700 just based on how long it takes to create the form. But you can clearly do it yourself. Um, I'd be happy to help you with that as well, um, just through some consulting time. And it's great to teach you how to do it, because you can create them in the future as well then. Um, so you can create your own custom forms here. Let's just pretend it was a sprinkler system. And it would you know, give you the information that you might need. Um, and it would pull all this information in for you. So this is a custom report for another landscaping company who uses Stage 100. Um, and then they'd be able to sign it off, and it would become a piece of content. Um, back here in the reports feature, I could also just create a work ticket. Oh, supply and service report needs attention. So, so here's where you customize your work ticket, and this is what replaces, you know, the papers, the paper slip that you might leave at a customer's door or do, um, you know, when you leave. We've been here and done X, Y, and Z treatments. Um, this would be your work order ticket. Your logo would be here. Your company name and address is here. The customer's name or the client shows up here. The description of the call, the call type, the work performed, and this is obviously this came from the um, from when we typed it into that notes box in the work order itself. And then the employee name, date, travel time, start time, end time, and total hours. I don't have that showing up here. It's actually hidden. I want to show it. I can hide it. Show it. So the quantity and part number and description and the equipment, again, I didn't select a piece of equipment, so I don't have that there. Um, but I have the two-ton rooftop um, R22 compressor that was in there. That was, again, from April. So those parts are in there. And then my electrical component that I added for $5 is in there as well. And then the quantity and the total. You can turn on or off the ability to show dollar amounts, like I said before. So you might just want to show units to the customer and then the bill goes out in the mail. This is, again, just the work ticket. You can require that the technician sign it and the customer, or just the customer signs it. And it's just handing over a tablet and gathering a signature. Usually they use their finger. If you have stylus, you can use a stylus. Um, and then, you know, Megan Stewart from Support IFS is the um, default email here. And I'm just going to email it to myself for today's demo. And I'll show you what that looks like on my screen as well. Oh, and there's previously a work ticket from before, so do you also want to attach that? Let's just pretend that was a picture. I took a picture of my completed installation job, and I wanted to send the customer a picture of their job as well as a service report. I could do that here. I'm going to continue. Service report being redirected. So now I'm back into the work ticket, um, the work order detail page, and just as soon as I got off there. I got the email here from Lamb Shoes, work order ticket. And you can customize this note as well. So this just says the thank you, you can catch service report. You might have a nice company signature or thank you for using, utilizing our landscaping company. And here's what the PDF looks like. So you can custom tailor this as well, like I said, to, to any of your requirements. And there's my signature. You can add a terms and conditions page if you'd like. Um, this one doesn't have any terms and conditions, but if I did, it would say it here. <laughs> um, so you can you can customize that as well. Um, so that's what the email looks like from them to the customer. And now you see over here, I have attachments to the work order. So I have the work ticket from April, or I have the workers ticket from today. And if I had done any other, um, you know, so here's the work ticket in Stage 100 as well. If I had to, um, added a picture. I can easily do it from my laptop um, here by just doing choosing a file, and it would go to my automatically to my pictures folder. Um, well, no, nope, just kidding. It was somewhere else. But I could add a photo. You know, I could add a photo that I took with my uh, with my computer or with my uh, laptop or tablet. I could also hit choose file and upload multiple files at a time if I wanted to upload multiple files. Um, so you can upload one at a time or or multiple at a time. 
and then you'd be able to um, attach those to the work order. And those would also be able to email back and forth to the customer or anybody in the office which is doing, you know, you might be doing your paperwork um, for the week and just checking up on, you know, Jessica to make sure she did all of her service reports and attached the proper um, pictures or forms, et cetera. I'd be able to see them here. I could download all of them in one fell swoop. Um, you can do that that way as well. Um, so that's the work order. Basically from start to finish, a very quick synopsis. And out here on my assignments page, my one hour is coming over here. Um, and it's showing me, sorry, it's showing me one hour and now it's added to my hours for the week. So I have eight hours. I have the holiday for Monday, which is, you know, Labor Day. And then I did a demo for eight hours on Tuesday and then one hour on Friday. Um, so now I have my nine regular hours that are going to payroll and my eight holiday pay. So I have 17 for the week. If I wanted to submit my time and you wanted to have your technicians do this, it's a pretty easy thing to do. Hit submit their hours. Are you sure you want to submit them? All that says is my hours are ready to be reviewed. It doesn't necessarily send their hours to payroll. That obviously is a function within Sage 100 that you still have to do. Um, but the hours are ready to be submitted, or the hours have been submitted. And if this person had a supervisor, which I happen to be my own supervisor, I'd log in and I'd be able to review my timesheet. So at the end of a payroll period, you can come in here and do a timesheet review. I'd want to get today, this week's submissions. I'd see that Jessica submitted her time. Here's her hours. If I wanted to know the detail of that tech and how many hours and on what jobs they did, I can come in here and check it. See if it's all good. And again, I can download all of her work tickets for a week in one cell group here. You know, you can do it by work order or you can do it by week um, by tech. Um, if I don't like her time, I can clear it and say redo. You need to fix this in such X, Y, and Z hours. There was something wrong there. You can do it and make them do it themselves or you can change it back in stage 100 and it would correspond to this change here. Um, but this allows the technicians to enter the information from the field, enter the notes into the work orders, and update information for a client, um, and then you wouldn't have to do any double entry or wait for those paperwork pieces of paper to come back to you. You'd be able to see at real time what was happening on the screen. So let's just pretend I'm back at dispatch here. I'd be able to see that I'm complete on that call because I did complete myself. Oops, I'm not coming in. JP. <laughs> so I heard my assignment under my name. And I had it open, my started time. Oh, I should have dated myself. Hmm. That's strange. I'm completing myself. I thought I did that. Maybe I didn't complete myself. I think I just started and traveled. My assignment was complete. That's my fault. Uh, so now it's grayed out. It's complete. So I might have just hit not hit that completion um, all the way to fruition. But again, you'd see how your week would lay out and your calls would lay out. You'd be able to take calls and stretch them if they were longer. You know, it's, it's going to be a half a day job. And, you know, fill the guy's time frame that way. Um, then tomorrow you can come in and you can roll your assignments. You could say, hey, all of yesterday's assignments need to roll over to today if they didn't get completed. And you can roll those calls right over and make sure that you don't miss anything nice feature as well. That is your quick hit list. Um, if you want, I can show you quotes, but I don't know if that's something you want to get into at this point in time. Um, quotes as in? As in you'd be able to generate, um, let's just look at one. You'd be able to say, hey, I'm on this work order and it needs more work done. The customer also wants a quote on an installation job for, you know, 60 yards, more bolts, or something like that. And so you can come in here and you could go from your work ticket, you could generate a quote, and you could put in at least at least the cut client's name, the work order that you're re referencing, and some, um, let's just see one. You could put in the client's name, so it would come from the client. You would put it, it would attach it to an order number. You'd be able to put in technician comments, so here, needs new filters and belts. Yours might be uh, once additional mulch, but needs a quote for it. And then what happens here is you can decide how much the technician is required to give you in the office, usually at minimum amount of hours and, you know, and what they want as a description is usually helpful. And then it comes back into the back office, and then the office comes in here and just edits the quote. They get the edit feature. 
and they come in here and finalize it, right? So they say, okay, I want to, you know, he wrote, he spelled something incorrectly, or I want to make it more detail. New for new, you know, building. I want to give it more information. So you can come in here and make it and jazz it up, you know. <laughs> Thank you for the. Uh, Um, the technician, like I said, just gives you a couple things. And then you're able to come in here and say, you know what, 20 hours isn't enough. I think it actually will be 24. You know, you can edit what they've told you. And you can decide if you want to give the customer line item detail, group lines together. Let's do detail so you can see everything. And you can fill out all of this. This is not going to communicate back to Stage 100. This is, a, this is an SSO feature only. And what you can do then is, generate the quote into an order if it gets approved. So right now this is just a, a, a quoting tool or a feature that you're able to utilize. But it does pull information from your stage 100. So if you have parts in your um, inventory or miscellaneous items, you can put those in there. Um, so inventory parts you can still pull from your inventory. It doesn't actually put it anywhere. It's just pulling that name and the cost so that it knows how much to mark it up. And then if I had content, let's say I had pictures or X, Y, and Z items for that quote that went along with it because the technician provided it from the off field, I have it there. And then I could go and save it. So now I upped it 24 hours and I added a nice little blurb there. I can view my quote. I can do the print view. I like my margins. And this is what you could send right to the customer. And you can customize this just like you can your work order detail. So you can, your logo, your address, you know, it would pull the same information here. You'd have your description. See, my scope of work is now there. Thank you for the opportunity to quote the following. And then I added, it's now 24 hours, filters, belt, concrete. So these things come in. Maybe I don't want to show them the amount of hours or the price. I just want to give them a total. You can edit it like this. So it gives you all the information, and then you're able to up and down and remove and, and manipulate the data. So I just want them to see this for 880. That's all I want. Create the PDF. Here it goes. It's just like the work order detail. It automatically creates a quote, um, a PDF. If you wanted, you can email it right to the customer from here. So I could send it to me. You can dictate what you want your quote bodies to always be the same text or different text, just like you could the service report. And you can include all the pictures. And today's quote. Wow, this is old from 2013. And then I would send it to the customer. So Jessica, you said that this does not communicate back to Stage 100. How would someone get this information into Stage 100? So oh, it's just um, I'm gonna send myself an email. Sure, that's a good question. So now I have the quote, and it didn't have anything in the body. But if I did, um, I'd be able to see my quote, and it would come over. And you can technically reply then and say, I approve this quote, or they can sign it with their you know, PDF signature capture and reply back to you and approve it. So that's the email portion of it. Um, so if we edit the quote, let's say they did approve it. If you change the status to approved, I believe I might be wrong. Hold on. In phase 300, you're able to create a work order from it. I'm not positive if that's the same in phase 100. I might have to do a little research. Hold on a second. One second. Are my settings here? We'll pause this and edit it out. <laughs> the recording. Um, require labor, default cost, display quote, default work order priority. So it does work. But what's the default priority available when generating a work order from a quote request? So you can absolutely generate a quote from here because it's asking me what type of priority I would give it. I just don't see the button. Hold on. Work order generation, yes. Yes. Enable work order assignment, yes. All these are set to yes. I did not see the button. I'm, I'm almost positive, just based on what I saw from those settings there that we would be able to take that quote and generate it into a work order. Um, I'm just not sure why. Quote number two, wasn't it? Which? 
I'm not sure why I don't see that button. Um, edit. There's usually a button once you approve it where it says generate quote. And I'm just not seeing it. And does it doesn't mean anybody else? Am I, is it just me? <laughs> uh, Again, you change the status to approved, and the button appears up at the top, and it just says generate into an order. And it would generate into an order with the priority that it was given. It would give the next successive order number for City of Modesto, mm -hmm. and it would have the information from the general tab. I will, um, I'll put a bug in IFS is here for a little explanation on that real quick, and I'll get right back to you. Um, but yes, you would be able to generate it from approved. Before that, though, it's not held over in, um, in stage 100 until it's approved and then generate the work order. I'm just trying to see where that button hides for stage 100. I'm sorry. Mm. Hmm. Well, let's, let's move on so we don't have to listen to me. <laughs> Look for it. But then it would go over to stage 100 and the information would be there. And then you'd be able to assign the call give it to the technicians, um, and the technicians would then be able to, you know, put a purchase order to the work order if they needed to, et cetera. <laughs> I mean, as you can see here, here's the new work order detail. You should just have this option. Is what I guess this is what I'm trying to find with that new work order from the quote. And what it would do is it would pull in, um, it would pull in the status, the type, and the priority automatically, um, and then it would give the description would be the quote detail, and then you already have it, and as well as the site. So all the site and the description would be pre-filled for you based on the quote, and then it would automatically generate a new um, work so order. You it says you it. How does it save the quote? How, how did it save more? it? Yeah, I mean, how how would we go back and? Let's say it's two months on the road, the, the mm -hmm. client comes, so that's approved now. Yep. So, so the quotes, the quotes are all saved here under your quotes management tool, and all of the quotes for the history of the entire time that you have the Sage Service Ops software are held here, and you can sort by site. So, if a customer calls back and says, "You know what? I do want to approve it," and you say, "Oh, and they're from Lamb Shoes," you can search just Lamb Shoes. Quotes. You could even search by quote number. They might, you know, they might reply back and say, "I approve quote number two. You know, I had a quote ID on my quote. I don't know if you remember seeing that, but the quote ID they'll reference, or you can look it up. You can look it up by work order number. Um, you also can go right yeah. into a service site. Let's go right into a service site. There is that quote tab. I don't know if you remember that, but it's held here as well. So, um, if I wanted to just go into, oh, no, nope, from assignment. Sorry about that. If I wanted to just, let's go to Margaret Fuller. If I wanted to go into her site, I would have um, a quote content here. So I would have quotes if she had any quotes in here, and I'd be able to look at them really easily. Mm. Does that make sense? So it's held by the site. It's also held by, um, it's also able to be looked up in your quotes tool. So. Here's my quote tool. Here it is. Mm. Oh, my quotes for lamp shoes. Right. But this is technician specific, right? Or whatever they've done on their login. Um, no, this actually the quote feature in the service site lookup is mm -hmm. company wide. The technicians would only be able to see assignments that were assigned to them. Okay, but if so they wanted the to go into Lamb's shoe, they could see history for the location, despite so the whether or not they created does, the quote. If a technician does a quote, can he go back and view his own quote? Yes, he would be able to use this search feature by the quote and just look at the quote. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then in the office, then you would see everyone's quote at once. They would... F Office and technicians alike have the ability to see all quotes. Technicians cannot edit a quote or view the quote profitability. That is okay. an office feature. The, the technician would only be able to do the view action, 
and they would only be able to see, they basically would just see the print view without, without giving the um, margin. They would see the PDF is what they'd see. Sorry, they'd see the PDF option. That's it. When you set up a user, I'll show you this maybe. When you set up a user, just look at my user. When you set up a user, you can declare whether or not they're office staff or even, you know, so they get they get roles very similar to, you know, in Stage 100 when you have the roles set up and how many privileges or tasks you can do and what whatnot. You set up whether or not they can do certain items. And so <clears throat> you can say, I don't want that, that technician to generate any quotes, so they can't. Or I want them to generate quotes, you know, just to the point where they send them to the office, but I don't want them to see any, they won't be able to email it to um, a customer. You know, so you can, you, know, you can take away and give privileges very specific to the user. Does that help? Yes, it does. Thanks. Okay. Okay, no problem. So again, these are all of the items. So you have abilities to add and abilities to edit. You know, you can take away by one person or by all, you know. And then you have the ability to, I'm a supervisor of these folks, so I was able to assign work orders to other, you know, resources. If you're not, you know, you don't have to make somebody a supervisor of anybody, and they would just be able to put time in for themselves and see their own assignment. That's it. So being a supervisor allows you, you know, you might have a foreman who has five guys on his crew, and you don't want to buy SSO for top six people. You want to buy it for the foreman, you know, or pay the monthly fee for the foreman. So the foreman could be the supervisor of his crew, and he could put time in for his crew. So Jessica, along those lines, one of the things that we did discuss was making some things much easier for the office and, and reporting time back in is one of those items, not just for payroll, but also so that there's a visibility as far as what should be built out. And I know you kind of touched on that a little bit, but can you go back and give us a few more details about um, the time that's going to be reported by these supervisors and the possibilities of having that perhaps go into payroll and where all it can touch stage 100? Sure. So this is my assignments page, right? So I was building my assignments. I kind of talked a little quickly through that. But I built my assignments and I submitted my hours. So let's say I put all of my hours in for the week and I had 40 and I had some overtime. I have my hours and they would look a little bit better than this. I'd submit my hours. And then I, as a technician, I'd be able to go back a week and see what my hours were, you know, a week before, a week, um, and so on. So I'd be able to look at my own hour history that way. That would be, you know, my ability as a technician. But as a supervisor, I have what's called the timesheet report. And we'd be able to see payroll from any time anyone ever submitted time. Maybe this was a busier submission time. Nope. So <laughs> I'd be able to see um, the time that was reported via the tech tool um, by week um, this way. And then these hours correlate to time entries in Sage 100. And now I don't have Sage 100. I don't know if you uh, remember me saying that, um, Pam, but I don't have the Sage 100 software installed on this machine. Um, I was able to remote into a server for a long time, um, so I'm not able to actually show you the fields that they're in in Sage 100 to show you where it corresponds. But if you want to open Sage 100 on one of your machines, I'm happy to show you within one of your work orders. But wherever you in, where you enter labor in Sage 100 under the work order and you put in the time, it will it will it will already be there for you. So you would just be correcting or you would just be self correcting or checking that time and then you'd be able to post that time and it would go over to payroll as a regular time entry and it would follow where you have the um let's see, no not user, sorry. Under settings you set your um time entry. So you set your payroll period, you submit your daily payroll entry, you decide whether or not it needs to be daily, yes or no. You decide your pay types. These come right out of stage 100. What types can they pick from? The default service order pay type, you pick that too. Obviously, that's set up as well in your, um, in your stage 100. The default payroll cost codes. So you set up your defaults, and then you can decide whether or not you want the technicians to um, be able to use miscellaneous time or only work order time. 
you, know, you can say, nope, no miscellaneous time entry. <laughs> Um, or you can say yes, this is time entry. And so you can control all of the time entries through all of these settings, and you can definitely, and you can control whether or not they can make any changes to their time after the payroll period. So right here we have 12 hours after Sunday, they're able to edit their time, and after that it becomes frozen. It becomes no, no longer editable, and you alone in the office are the only ones able to edit their time. So people can't go back in and change their time or you know, up their hours after they've gotten a signed slip or something like that. And so you're able to so, manipulate all of these hours and decide how many weeks in the past or future they can see. And then the supervisor, whether or not you want them to review the time, yes or no. And um, you can require a note before they submit time, yes or no. And so that is how you require them to put their time in from the tech tool or from SSO. And then the time that's reported in stage 100 is just like your time entries would be in stage 100. They would be there. They would be linked to the work order, linked to the technician, linked to the day. You'd be able to do your time, your payroll period, all those in. I don't know if you do two weeks or one week at a time, um, but yep, you can. You would do it just like you do currently, unless you don't do payroll through stage 100. <laughs> Maybe I'm speaking too freely, but you would. Do the exact same process that you do now. You just wouldn't have to key those hours in if they're if they're putting them on paper. They would already be in your Stage 100 system. You just be and so, Chris. Chris, this is what I was mentioning to you guys before that this time would go into the daily payroll screen and stage where you would not have to manually input all that time, but it would be flowing in from the system. You would be reviewing it once it's in there, but it would cut down on the manual entry. Right. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jessica. I just wanted to make sure everybody. Oh, no saw problem. It. Yeah, no, I, you know, like I said, normal. I would love to be able to open Stage 100 and show you the field, and I would put five in and show you where the five appears. <laughs> but I, can't, I do not literally have Stage 100 on this machine, and my uh, security rights to the server were changed when they partnered with me. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll fix that sure, I'm sure shortly. Any other cool. screens you wanted to see? Um, you know, we did the dashboard, the dispatch, the assignments. You can search quotes this way. There's the tools, for the time sheet report. Here's where you can do your custom forms. We were talking about a little bit. We touched on that, and you can customize your forms there. Um, you could shoot out an email to a technician. You could pull up a work order number and easily communicate um, details about that call through the notification tool. That's a nice little feature. You pick your technician from the drop down and say, I wanted to tell you know, Jay about that call. This is the call I was telling you about. So here, after you finish you know, number one or whatever it is, and then send the notification, Jay's gonna get an email. Um, and the technician would then be able to reply and you could have a conversation in, re in regards to this. And in the email, which is really nice, is it gives a link right to um, right to the tech tool. So, right here. so I just get CC because I sent it. But it says the following notification for that order was sent to you. And they can just link right up to the tool. So if they're on their smartphone or tablet, it takes them right to the record. They could go ahead and say, all right, start traveling and go through all the motions that we were talking about before. So Jeremy and Chris, do you guys kind of see how this is taking the stuff that you're using Stage 100 for right now, which is the mainly the accounting side of that, and allowing you to use that same information out in the field and automatically get the, the paper passing taken care of? Do you kind of see why we're, why we're going for this? or why we're talking about this. Yeah, I, I, I see. How about you, Chris? Yeah, I can see it. It, it seems like there's a lot of... that. Uh, like, how would this look on a tablet? In terms of, you know, it looks great on a laptop screen because you've got a lot of... <laughs> sure. 
Yeah, so, so this, this, the dispatch board, I'm going to not lie to you, the dispatch board does not look pretty on a tablet, <laughs> but the dispatch board isn't what the technicians will be using. The assignment board looks, looks very nice, actually. They have it pretty streamlined. Um, and when you click on the work order and you go over here to the details, it actually pops up a lot of different um, smaller windows. If, if you want, let me just... Uh, let me log out and log in as a new user. Hold on a second. I'll show you real quickly. I won't do the whole demo again, but big set of problems. One second. I'm just working on a different monitor here. Hold on. Get no assignment. All right, so um, I just had to minimize my screen here a little bit here. Whoops, dang it. Login in. I just have to log into the new design. Hold on a second. And it has, a, it has the user-friendly version for assignment. Sorry, I had it disenabled. Okay. So the new, so when you're on a tablet or a smartphone, let's just picture, you know, assume that your screen is about this big. Um, you're able to, you're able to um, minimize the view. You could actually, instead of seeing an entire week, you could decide to just be one day at a time. Um, you can toggle back to the menu items this way. So instead of going across the top, they actually show you this way, this view. Um, you can. Um, go right into the work order detail from, from this page, and then instead of having that big screen where you had to go back and forth, you have the overview, the notes, the assignments, the hours, the parts. You know, so then it just brings them up this way. Um, I picked a closed work order, so I'm not able to add items. But um, the service report when you when you create a service, the service report still looks a little tough, but it squeezes it down. You know. And you have to scroll a bit. It's not bad, um, but the nice the, the nicest part is the work order detail. You have this um, new quote button here. You have your quick menus here if you want to do equipment. It saves a history, which is really nice. It saves it saves the um, most frequently used or the last work order work order you were looking at. So let's say you were looking at quote two. You went on another page. Oh shoot! You can hit this little um, clock here and get your history, which is quite nice. Um, so they tried to make it a little bit more user friendly um, on the tablet um, through this app like look <laughs> um, this way. But um, I keep hitting home and my home page is the dashboard, which is not pretty. Um, but I'm able to I could quick button over here, write to my assignments or write to my hours and notes, items, assemblies, parts, you know, I could create a PO from right out here. I, it looks up my vendors from AP. I'd be able to generate and create a PO. So it doesn't look too bad. It actually is pretty decent on the tablet. Um, some of the pages haven't translated well yet, and I know that they say they're going to. Um, they think that this new design will probably be out by beginning of October, um, but it's a lot better than it used to be when it was <laughs> when it was on a smartphone. It, it's definitely, it's certainly much more user friendly. So the work order detail page alone is like a huge improvement. Um, just having this option to have these quick buttons here, and then they just pop out items, which is great. So that's what the new design looks like. So it, it's pretty decent. Um, you could imagine that being like an iPhone 6, <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> so, yeah, refresh my memory too. Then, so on the quotes, you said it could go to a supervisor before sending it to a customer. Right. Is the same, was the same true on a work order? So once you've performed the work order, you're ready to invoice it, it's still going to go to a supervisor before you finalize and it finalizes it in Master Builder? Or I mean, Sage, um, 
No, the work the work order actually doesn't go through a supervisor approval process before you could email it to a customer. I mean, you could take away the feature or the function to email the service reports out from the field, and all they would do is generate them. You know, it kind of takes away the purpose of having the field generate a service report. Um, but but the work orders itself um, are able to be they're, they're generated and they capture the signature, and then upon hitting that button, they go directly to the customer normally. You can take away the pricing though and just have it called a service report and it would just be unit. And that's what a lot of companies do. Is they say this is a service report, this is the work performed. And anyway, the invoice comes from the office. Okay. Because that's what right. I'm wondering. How how does the flow work if a if a guy goes out and performs a day's worth of work, he finishes three or four work orders, how are the supervisors getting notified of what's being completed? Is it just by looking at their summary of work performed, or how does yeah, that flow? Yeah, it would be. So the work orders will complete as the technicians update their assignments. So it should okay. it should be part of the you know your daily. I mean, it would be part of the process of which what work orders were completed yesterday. Yeah. So the work order status would change to complete if all the technicians' assignments were complete, right? Okay. So that would be, and then you could, you know, you can create a quick report, you know, that work orders by status by complete, right? Um, and so it would be that way. That would be the, the way that you would probably manage it. I mean, if you don't bill your customer clients um, off of work orders daily, you can certainly do the weekly timesheet report, you know, look at all the service reports and then go through and somebody would be responsible for going into those work orders and closing those out and sending the bills out to the customer. You could do it that way. At the weekly at the weekly time, but you can all, certainly do it daily as well by 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 following the work order status. Okay. And you can but, create but, so that the office is CC to copy of every ticket as well, and maybe that's your prompt to go in and review those. So it'll show how much that text on each day then. It it will or it won't. What was the question? Sorry. Will right. So. Yes, mm -hmm. it will show how much the technicians done each day. As long as the technician puts in the information from the field, the information will be in page 100. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, the notes automatically go back in, the work order part, the um, creation of a purchase order against a work ticket, um, all of that goes right in. And you just said, right, that you can have it set up that the technicians would update units, but they would not push the final billing button, correct? Right. Right. This doesn't this does not this does not invoice a client. So what this okay. does is it allows them to see pricing and they would have a slip and they could collect payment if they wanted to, but somebody still needs to physically click that button in, in stage one hundred to finalize that work ticket into an invoice to go over to the invoice process. What they're doing okay. right now is showing you basically they're they're taking the data from the, the work order register or what the units would be and they're 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 able to display it to the customer, but they're not actually changing that work order into an invoiced status. If that makes okay. Sense. Yeah, because I can just think of a couple of examples where we don't necessarily invoice for labor, but we'd invoice for parts including contract or something. So mm -hmm. we would hate to invoice the client and then them freak out because we you know, invoice them for labor, and right. our technicians wouldn't know those uh, nuances. Right. And early. within the admin settings, you actually have the ability to decide whether or not, like I said, the pricing should be turned on or not. You can actually okay. do it very specific um, under the work order. Uh, la, 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 other. Um, oh, where is it? It's a huge menu option here. <laughs> Barcoding entries to your sizes. There is a turning on pricing, and you can decide by call type or by feature whether or not you want the pricing to be turned on or off. So you can control all of that through your settings. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's display sales price, yes or no. We have some options there as well. Other questions? Anything else you wanted to see?
Hey, Jessica, this is Dennis. You know what, you know what I'm going to ask, and only because I really like it. And some people got to see it a couple times. That ability to build those custom forms, I'm sure you guys – have checklists for chemicals that you're you're having to put out, uh, but you got papers that you're trying to keep track of things and an ability to build these custom forms, and 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 Jessica will go through. It. You can make sure that they fill them out and they fill out all the cells they're supposed to. They don't just kind of halfway do them. Uh, and to me, that's where some of our other clients have seen some really value because sometimes the forms came back half done, not done, didn't do them. Uh, it just kind of forces them to do these as they do their work orders. Sure. So I'm going to, I'll build a really quick re signature required form if you want. Um, sample form. Okay. And I'm going to add that I need a signature. And I go in here and I just say must sign below. And I can make it required. <laughs> and I'll actually add one more field. I'll add the, uh, the work order field, right? Yeah, that makes the most sense. And I can pick from some items here, so the work order number, save the form. And now I can make this form enabled, and I can put it on different different levels. Actually, I happen to be in stage 300, but it's the same exact module, same form, same form module. Um, and then I can go into my um, form logic, and I can actually decide some really great steps in here. I can say, you know what, every time this form is filled out, if everything's checked off, I want a copy of it, and I want it sent to X, Y, and Z person. If it's not, or maybe if it's not all filled out, I want to know, because they didn't do it correctly. I want to catch it sooner rather than later. That's another option. Um, so it allows you to say, you know, I want some controls on there. You can even build multi-page forms where if X, Y, and Z is not filled out, you can skip to page two, three, or four. So there's some there's some very complicated forms out there. Mine was a very simple one. Um, but you can also enable rules to say, you know what, you don't have to sign it if, you know, if the call type is something or other. You know, so you can enable some show and hide field rules as well. Um, but we're not going to have any rules. We're just going to make me capture a signature. Go to my dashboard. I'm going to just uh, refresh real quick here. Refresh. Make sure that that's a good one there. Yeah, I'm good. What the heck? <laughs> just want to make sure I want to use this new report here. And now I have my signature required form. I could make this signature, I could make it required upon service report generation. I could make it required before they could complete their service call. Um, you know, you have a lot of different logic that you can build in as well. So here's what my, my very basic weighing form is, but it's for work order 23221, must sign below. I signed it. And now that signature and that work order will always have a form attached to it that I did, that I completed. So I completed the service reform required, and it was, it was done. And so if I were to go back into my forms page, I think, I'd be able to see entries. There it is. 57 seconds ago, Jessica filled out that form. So this is, I'd be able to see all of my PM checklists or sprinkler inspections, and um, they'd be able to, you could sort them, you could export them into Excel and sort them by location. Um, so, so you're able to actually collect all of this data as well. So everything that you put into your form is a collectible or queryable database field. So that's really nice too. Um, I have some really simple data here, but <laughs> but I started with a fresh database recently. Um, so so that's that's the forms in a in a quick five minute overview. But you can customize these forms to have logos or to have links to require a photo to be uploaded. Um, a lot of really, really neat things. So Any thoughts? <laughs> Anything else for me? Friday. Uh, are, we, are we able to get an email for so we could 
share this demo with some other people in our, in our organization? I'm Dennis, do you, you can share the recording. I actually, this isn't my go-to meeting, but I'm sure somebody who yeah, recorded so, so, it. So, so Pam is recording it, and so as soon as yep. Pam uh, sends me the MP4 file, I think it is, uh, then I'll just load it up to YouTube, and it'll, you'll have a link to a YouTube video that you can watch. Nice. Okay. Okay. Maybe so it's, maybe it's, done, maybe Monday, maybe this afternoon. It just depends on how soon I get it and can convert it. Awesome. Once we're done, I'll figure out how to send that over. So um, it might take me just a little bit. Yeah. It takes a while to configure those files. For sure, they're large. Looks, looks really good. We appreciate your time, Jessica. Oh, you're so welcome. It was nice to meet all of you. If you have any other questions down the road, I'd be happy to help. Very good. Okay. Take all care. Right, Thanks, Dennis. Bye, Pam. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Bye -bye. Jeremy, if you have any other questions, give me a holler or a Pam a call and we'll get you answers. Very good. And I'll be Thanks. following up I'll be following up with you guys a little bit later too. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Bye.